Hey guys, back here in Michigan, going over some paperwork and kind of getting caught up from the uh, time spent on the road here. We've had a great 2021 so far and uh, we've got a great client list ahead of us and trying to answer some questions that always arise uh, on projects or partials with clients uh, over the phone. Uh, one thing that I find on my client properties is something that I really stress that, that we, we we re-chat about, if you will, uh, throughout the entire day as we're designing the property, is the importance of a, uh, a correct transition area. Now, that, that uh, transition area, you've heard that in multiple terms. You've heard it in transition corridors, you've heard it in transition areas, you've heard it in lines of travel. There's many, many terms that explain that. What I always uh, refer to so you'll if you if you resonate with uh, me as a client or a potential client or a follower here on the channel what you'll see me chat about is a transition area to me is just that it's transitioning deer from point A to point B it's not a corridor to me when I speak of corridors I speak of corridors internal abetting areas that are much narrower kind of that uh, sometimes I refer to it as a snake trail if you will uh, it's it's much tighter uh, more, way more person, personal, uh, meant for a corridor is meant for bedding. Now, could you classify a transition area as a corridor, I guess? Y yes, you can. Uh, I like to call it a, a transition area because to me it has a different meaning about what we are trying to create and, and why. Now, if we, if we go from a hardwood setting to a uh, open hardwood setting or a hardwood setting in general, and, and or we are talking about a thick area such as uh, through a tag elder swamp or or just really really dense property that has been cut you know 10 15 years ago and uh, your browse is now above that silver dollar size that we speak of and you're you're uh, mulching it or in uh, pines let's say uh, so there's two different things there but it all to me resonates with having to the need to really understand a correct transition area and why it's so important. So today we're gonna to talk about, we're gonna to touch on a couple of things. One is understanding just that. A corridor is five to eight feet wide, internal of bedding. So anywhere that you are trying to place bedding, you connect the word corridor to that trail. So uh, corridors, internal of bedding in doe bedding areas. Here we've got the diagram that I just placed food to the north. So I've got bedding uh, labeled on both sides of this. So you can see this bottleneck here, if you will, uh, that is created when you go from a corridor at five feet to eight feet wide and you transition that into a transition area, which is up to 20 feet wide. Like I said, if it's thick, then you've got to look at your canopy uh, versus your low canopy versus your high canopy and uh, you know, figure out what the exact width is, and that's something that I try to study. But rule of thumb is if you're tr creating new brows in a transition area, why is it 20 feet up to 20 feet? And why, is it, why does it differ so much from a corridor? So the answer to that is it's sunlight. You were trying to create a, we're trying to penetrate that canopy in those long transition areas between point A and point B, being, being from, from food back to bedding, and we are trying to create new growth, regrowth, regeneration along that trail. Um, for years, I I really I really struggled with that, and and uh, because I was that guy that is like much of you are watching that I I just I wanted to keep it to keep it narrow, I guess maybe uh, to keep it secluded. The problem with that is is you just don't get the sunlight. It's hard to penetrate uh, a canopy let alone a canopy that's only you only take taking out five to eight feet why why does a why can a corridor then be you know we're trying to trans you know transfer that sunlight to the forest floor as well and the reason is is in a corridor situation you're doing a lot of hinge cutting um, more so than you are doing in a transition area let's say and you're opening up way more canopy anyway so um, the trail in between your hinge cuts uh, the stumps of your hinge cuts let's say or the hinge it, it uh, lets the sunlight in anyway because the other trees that you're dropping uh, down inside of a bedding area, like our hub style, for example, uh, or a secluded buck bed that we're going to talk about here in a minute. So uh, to me, that's why. We, we have to transfer that sunlight uh, 
most properties that I go on to when we're creating transition areas, other than folks that are hunting on trail systems, that the transition area isn't as powerful as it is. So in my designs and in my teachings, what you'll find with me um, is I promote these transition areas to the fullest because, uh, and, and if you can find a trail system to work off from, that's great. If you have to reinvent the wheel, wheel because things are placed in the wrong spot, then that's okay too. But by cutting them out, uh, by cutting these out, these transition areas out 20 feet wide along the way, like we have talked in the past, you're letting that sunlight. So today's topic is more about how to influence the, uh, to influence the transition area itself. So, you know, the debris along a transition area, what do you do with it? You know, it's not a, uh, in cer certain areas you have to take a, uh, you know, I recommend taking a dozer in. The property that, that I was on last week there in Kentucky is one of those perfect spots. There's no, it's this is a long gradual ridge system that's, you know, 100 foot in elevation that, uh, that just runs for, you know, it's, it's 150, 200 yards from the top of those ridges to the bottom. And there's just sporadic deer movement in there. Now, with a transition area and a bench system that we're creating, there's no, you know, some of them had a bench, but they're dead, dead ended. And so what we did in there is where you can get a dozer in, then you carve a bench into that, and then you work your transition area off. If not, if it's not that situation where you're not going to use a dozer to create a bench and uh, let then let it regenerate, what you're doing is then we are just going down through there with the saw and we are uh, hinging where we can hinge along these way out this way uh, where you want to promote bedding but we are not hinging close where we get into stand locations so what what we're going to chat about here is the 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 influence that you can have with the with debris so we're going to break this this uh, video sequence here this video uh, into a couple of uh, parcels but one that we're going to talk about today is the influence of the structure I'm often asked you know uh, I never, I never promote putting the um, the debris right parallel with the tra trail itself because it creates a, it's a, it creates too much of a road uh, block or a squeeze. So what you'll find is if you don't hinge cut these on like a 45 here along the way, uh, you know it's it's good to cut them on a 90, but I prefer a 45. And the reason I prefer prefer a 45 is this: it's not too tight in a transition that you're squeezing them in because if you lay these parallel on these on these transition areas here guys on both sides it's way too tight even though it's 20 foot wide um, and the deer will avoid it they'll go to the outside which defeats the purpose of having a transition area will it still create edge it will but they, it places deer on the inside too far which they can get behind you at stand locations <clears throat> and the other situation it places them across the other side of the transition area out of uh, you know shop or, or shop placement range or shot range in general so effective range so I uh, what I recommend doing is I like to I like to teach and, and I like to place these trees along this at these areas uh, these transition areas on a 45 the question arises is do you start them uh, because you can just feel looking at this if you start from your your food plot like that I like to do and to me I haven't found and I'll bring that to you someday that's something that I study all the time if I find that it's better to start in the bedding in, in 45 on one way or the other, I can't say that I, I have found that because it depends in that area whether it's an, an AM or, or PM uh, stand location. I'm sure that some AM stands uh, are better if you 45 in one way. Some PM stands are maybe better if you 45 in the other way. I personally haven't you know, um, found that to be an influencer yet that I can you know, bring to the table. Uh, so what I do is we start from the bedding area and we, or the uh, food and the bedding area, let's say this is to the north, and you walk in this system, so you come out of your transition area, or your corridor, five to five to eight feet wide and then corridors, and let's say your hub design is up here, you're placing these does on the food, you come in here and you start putting these trees on a 45 to the outside of the transition area, and you can see what that does is it creates, it's, it's creating, it, it, it just pulls you to the center of it. Now, it doesn't pull you to the center enough to make it tight, but it does create a, a better draw to me than it does if we just uh, hinge these out. Now, if you if you go along the way and one of these trees happens to go out, uh, you know, right, you know, uh, 90 degree on a 90 degree ang angle perpendicular to the to the trail, is it the end of the world? No, it's not, uh, because the you know the biggest thing is is you just don't want to shut this off that runs parallel on these transitions. By doing that, 
you are you are creating I, I get the question sometimes how much do you do well that depends on your canopy if it's a heavy canopy and it's uh, you know it's mature trees then maybe it's that this area after we design it and you lay it out then that's the time to take uh, you no know, take in take some paint and draw a center line out and have it log if there's any value to it now if there's not then what we do is we just do this hand by hand obviously and uh, you know you, you just create that 20 foot wide so you just cut the trees out block them lay them to the outside create this 45 degree angle like you said you can just see as you as you come up through here you can just see the draw any other way as well it, it's just a flow natural flow uh, and it's just that squeeze but it's not it's not too much which allows plenty of room inside 20 feet wide it, it allows uh, all the sunlight that you want because what's going to happen is and especially in the sun coming from that uh, you know in that southern sky transfers all the way up through here and you've got all of this uh, you know sunlight generating up through here and it's just going to create in through here you know you just this area just becomes peppered with uh, regeneration all your your brows that we're looking for and it also transfers to the outside so now this whole area you can see is is regenerating as the sun is penetrating up through here if it's only if these are treated the same as a corridor only five to eight feet wide you can't penetrate the you can't penetrate the uh the canopy uh, so like i said if it's in an area where this is shorter growth maybe it's a clear cut from 15 years ago or whatever then you don't maybe you don't have to go so wide because your canopy is, isn't as much of an influencer uh, but it's 20 up up to 20 feet wide is the rule of thumb that I have uh, you know, studied and worked on here over the last several, several years and found that that to be the, the best remedy. And uh, so that's why we do, that's what I recommend doing with the debris. So the first portion of this video is going to be, you know, the debris conversation. You, you angle these on a 45 and you get to a transition area that ties into it. So your stand location would be, would be here, obviously, right on the point of impact. So you'd have a scrape right here this would be a stand and your foot tra your foot travel coming in from the side hopefully and uh, you know that's a point of impact like we create the transition area is the same so you turn and then you you go out that transition area as well or you start from maybe there's food over this way and you tie that in and they're all they're all 45 the same way coming into that location now what do we do uh, what do we do here one of the things we're going to talk about here is what do we do along this way along the way uh, if if we have possibility because anywhere between your stand location and, and the food where you can get away with it and you're not going to get uh, busted then obviously then we promote we promote hinge cutting and that that promotes bedding but do not do those like I've always said sound like a break, broken record you guys have heard me say it a million times you're gonna hear me say it a million more do not hinge cut those trees too close to these stand locations but with that said is that creates a possibility maybe there's a ridge top right here a little hog back that you can get in behind for these buck beds what that creates guys is then then in a if it's just a buck bedding area that you're trying to promote that's off to the side of the transition because in this situation so stand here there would be i would you know hopefully be able to put another stand here for you and another looking branch so you have this foot travel in from the side as well and so anywhere that these connect our points of impact that's how you set these uh, properties up on the uh, you know aspect of having the transition area and that's what makes this transition area so powerful now keep in mind this is not in the center of your property this is built to the outside of your property this idea here would be on obviously on a larger parcel where we're tying into other things but if this was out of the, the equation and this was just on you know long linear on the outside uh, transition area on the outside of your of your uh, property you know you know you don't, you don't have to transfer in as far to stands so you can see this all ties together and it, that that is why i promote the uh the, the hinging aspect not near your stands i promote this debris to be cut on a 45 so in other words when i say debris i mean this th these are flush cut not hinge cut they're flush cut and they're tipped to the outside to the best that you can at a 45 degree angle away from the trail and you're creating that that center uh, gap and it's a powerful powerful tool tool and uh it's there's uh there's a lot to be said about having those out away from the trail on a on a 90 degree or perpendicular or having them at a 45 
And so that's the first step of this video that we're going to talk about, guys. I kind of touched on some other things that we're going to highlight here in the next video coming. Uh, but this is one thing that I wanted to reach out to you guys and chat about is because when I, I'm on properties and or I'm leaving properties, I, I get that phone call a lot. I get a lot of calls just from the channel itself or social media saying, hey, I really like that design. I really think that that's powerful. But what do I do with that debris? Can I lay it uh, you know, along that trail? The biggest thing is don't lay it right parallel with it to squeeze them, tip them out on a 45 at least, and uh, and then uh, that's that's how you create that ever so, you know, sought after transition that we're trying to create. And obviously throwing a couple stands in here for you so, so you can see how that ties in on a, on a huntability side of it. So just remember, don't hinge cut too close to those areas. Along these transitions, 45 them to the outside. 20 feet wide is best in a transition area. And when you start talking about corridors, keep your corridor internal, your, your corridor label inside of a bedding area. That'll help you determine between the two of them. And uh, that's the first step in this video series, guys. Thanks.